The votes have been counted after the first round of France's presidential election and socialist Francois Hollande holds a clear lead of 1.5% over Nicolas Sarkozy. Marine Le Pen finished in third and her anti-euro, anti-immigration agenda helped her National Front Party win the largest ever portion of the vote. To pick the bones out of Sunday's vote, I'm joined by Dr Douglas Yates, who is a politics expert based at the American University in Paris. Before we deal with the top two candidates, why did Marine Le Pen's far-right party do so well on Sunday? Well, the far-right vote in France is usually interpreted as an anti-system vote. That is, uh, you have people who are both traditionally on the right, uh, culturally speaking, who are ultra-nationalists, but also a very large number of them have been recuperated from the far left. Many voters in the National Front were workers whose jobs have been eliminated and are in structural unemployment. Another uh, group within this are recent additions who have defected from the main parties. Uh, their presence is explained by a successful discourse against the main parties. That is, people who are in this party are either ultra-right in the nationalist sense, far left, uh, in the sense of former communist voters or new young anti-system voters, alienated youths, and the rest. So it's a strange combination, and we place it on the extreme right for conventional reasons. But really, uh, when one in five voters is voting for this party, it's probably better to think of it as an anti-system vote. One of her campaign pledges was to withdraw from the euro. Does Sunday's result mean there is a large portion of French society who are anti-euro? Yeah, the support for not only the euro, but European institutions in general, tends to be higher among better off and more educated French people. The lower you go on both the socioeconomic status and on uh, education, the more opposition you have, alienation you have to European institutions. And so many of these National Front voters are precisely less educated or poor. These are people who see Europe as a distant elite project, and they feel about the Euro much as they feel generally about Europe. If there's one thing that binds these people together, it's opposition to things outside of France. So what will Nicolas Sarkozy have to do to get re-elected? Will he have to lurch further to the right, or will he try and reclaim more of the centre ground? That's an interesting analysis. Um, usually, you would say Nicolas Sarkozy could go to the centre, counting on the vote of the National Front. But because Marine Le Pen has just received a record result, she probably is going to continue her opposition to Sarkozy. She might even go as far as declaring her non-support. Um, if she did that, Sarkozy would have to actively court her voters by moving to the right. So uh, in this circumstance, I think what we can count on is Sarkozy, who needs those voters. Without them, he will lose making certain gestures and in his speeches and discourses making promises on issues like uh, migration and on issues like secularism to appeal to the national front but there's other issues where he simply cannot and those are issues concerning europe and the euro what are the implications of these results for Europe's leaders and how they deal with the Eurozone's problems? Because it seems despite playing a central role in the crisis, it hasn't helped him politically at home. Yeah, it's funny. His initial relations with Angela Merkel were quite terrible. Uh, his abrasive personality was probably the major problem. But hardship has brought them into a partnership where they have now reached certain agreements and made certain arrangements that would be destabilized were Sarkozy to be removed from office. And so clearly Angela Merkel supports Sarkozy. But I was in Germany this weekend, and uh, the newspapers and press seem to be suggesting that the Germans are preparing for Francois Hollande's potential takeover. And that means, I think, that Germany will try to normalize the relations. Francois Hollande 
had promised that he would renegotiate some of the recent agreements on European governance concerning the common market and the common currency and loans, um, if he were to follow through with that, that would be a difficulty. But my personal feeling is that Francois Hollande is not really a foreign policy expert. I see him much more as a domestic politician than an international actor. I don't think he has the stature or the personality to do European politics in a big way. Sarkozy, for better or for worse, placed France in the center of Europe. I think with Hollande, Germany will be in the center of Europe. Many market analysts are already getting worried at the idea of a socialist running the French economy. What would a Francois Hollande presidential term mean for France's economy? Okay, well, there will be differences just in that you do move from a right to a left, but Francois Hollande is in the center. And more than that, he has a governing style which is consensual. So it would be very likely, if Francois Hollande were to be elected, that he would try to negotiate with France's social partners. That would be the unions and large businesses on a series of issues that are dear to the socialists. But I think it would be unlikely that he would pursue any radical agendas. He's not a radical in nature, and he's not a radical in style. So those fears, uh, I think, can be exaggerated because the word socialist is present. The Socialist Party of Francois Hollande is more like new labor than the traditional left. OK, thank you, Douglas. The final runoff will take place on the 6th of May and we'll stay across that story here on Duke's Copy TV. But for now, goodbye.